This is a production of Cornell University. So, hi everyone. Uh, my talk today will provide an overview of my proposed research on studying bacterial adhesive mechanisms and how they may influence soil aggregate stability and the resulting effects on soil organic carbon persistence. So to start, we need to understand how soil organic carbon persists in aggregates. Uh, in the soil continuum model, we understand that organic carbon turnover time increases with increased adsorption of organic matter uh, to mineral surfaces and the formation of aggregates. Uh, focusing on the structure of an aggregate, we see organic matter such as exudates, necromass, and enzymes being protected by minerals that act as a physical barrier, uh, stopping organic matter from being immediately decomposed or turned over. Some of this organic matter may also facilitate aggregation uh, via organo-mineral interactions and organo-organic interactions. Microorganisms have also been shown to contribute to aggregate stability, specifically fungi, which produce myosilin networks that can enmesh uh, minerals and catalyze the adhesion of other organic carbon onto the aggregate. But what about bacteria? Do bacteria, bacterial cells produce organic adhesives uh, that contribute to aggregate stability? And if so, would we see a change in soil organic carbon mineralization rates depending on if the bacterial adhesive is present or not? Uh, to try and answer these questions, I decided to investigate bacterial organic adhesives and found that the initial irreversible step of adhesion for many uh, bacteria is through the production of a multi-layered polysaccharide complex called the holdfast. The model organism commonly used to study the bacterial holdfast is Colobacter cosentis. Uh, within the last two years in particular, uh, large steps have been made uh, to characterize the holdfast protein complex, its physiology and adhesion strength. However, the mechanism of adhesion of the holdfast is still unknown, meaning that we do not know if the adhesion mechanism occurs through uh, chemical reactions at the holdfast mineral interface, or if the adhesion mechanism occurs through physical mechanisms at the holdfast mineral interface. Uh, so an example of a chemical adhesion mechanism is like epoxy, um, and a mechanical adhesion mechanism example is like Velcro. So to answer these questions, I decided to divide my research into three chapters, where the first chapter is about uh, answering the question of what is the mechanism that allows the bacterial holdfast to adhere to mineral substrates. The second chapter, does the presence of the bacterial holdfast influence soil aggregate stability? How is this reflected in the persistence of non-holdfast soil organic carbon? And then the third chapter, going into the space side of my research, is does gravity trigger the production of bacterial holdfast and therefore the creation and stabilization of aggregates? So to get started with chapter one, uh, in which the goal was to understand the mechano chemistry at the holdfast mineral interface and the resulting adhesive strength from the interaction. So there are two objectives I have with this chapter. Of course, determine the mechano chemistry of the Colobacter crescentis holdfast at the mineral interface. Um, and the hypothesis I have for this is that the interfaces will be rich in nitrogen, phosphorus, and oxidized carbon, specifically because the holdfast, we, we've seen through previous studies that the holdfast is made of things like DNA and peptides. And with the presence of DNA and peptides, the adhesive strength has been shown to increase. So we might see interfaces that are rich in these kinds of elements. And then objective two, uh, to determine the chemical and or surface morphology mechanism of the adhesion uh, between the Colobacter crescentis holdfast and the mineral substrate. Uh, so understanding if the mechanism is primarily driven by chemical interactions or if it's driven by mechanical stabilization. Uh, I believe that it's gonna be more likely to be a chemical interaction that we see. So to meet this first objective of understanding the elemental chemical signatures at the holdfast uh, mineral interface, I propose using scanning transmission electron microscopy analysis in which with this uh, 
microscopy technique, we can really get down to that interface between the microorganism uh, hold fast and the mineral and use uh, eels, EDX, pretty much these uh, techniques that allow us to read the chemistry on the surface and understand what's potentially happening here on an elemental level, level as well as what the potential chemical bonds are that are happening between the holdfast and the mineral interface. And so to do this, pretty much uh, we take the Colobacter crescensus holdfast separated from the cell. There is uh, uh, a technique that we can use uh, to create a shedding, uh, a shedding, uh, phenotype for the cell where the holdfast can be separated from the cell, the bacterial cell. And then we take the holdfast uh, and incubate it onto an STM grid interacting with a mica sheet, and then go for the analysis of using STEM, scanning transmission electron microscopy at uh, Cornell's CCMR facility. So, and then with the second objective, which is holdfast adhesion mechanism, understanding uh, if it's a chemical or a physical mechanism at the, at the interface, we can perform dynamic adhesion force spectroscopy experiment using atomic force microscopy. And pretty much with this kind of experiment, your result will look something like this, where the atomic force microscopy probe uh, has the holdfast material attached to it and then you go through a tapping or a probing uh, experiment where it sticks the holdfast onto the substrate and then pulls up and it measures the work of adhesion with being stuck down and being pulled up. And so we'll get uh, diagrams like this uh, from the experiment. And so to test whether it's a chemical or a physical mechanism, again, we take the Colobacter crescentis holdfast by itself we incubate it onto the uh, probe tip of the atomic force microscopy instrument. And then we do a chemical adhesion test where we have something like a mica surface with a different surface charge uh, to see if there is a difference in the, the force uh, work of adhesion data that we get. Oh. And then with the uh, mechanical adhesion test, understanding if it's due to surface morphology, we can take something like a quartz surface and have a smooth surface versus a jagged rough surface to see if that has an effect on uh, the force uh, uh, that we're measuring for the uh, holdfast adhesion. So that was chapter one. Going into chapter two, uh, the goal is to understand how the presence of bacterial holdfast might intervert stability and the persistence of non-holdfast solar organic carbon. So the objective here is to really link the occurrence and abundance of the holdfast with aggregate stability and see if this actually confers persistence to other solar organic carbon. Um, so the hypothesis that I've come up with here is that the increased presence of Colobacter crescentis holdfast in the aggregate will increase overall aggregate stability and that soils in which Colobacter crescentis holdfast is present will have decreased soil organic carbon mineralization of non-holdfast soil organic carbon. So to answer these questions, uh, pretty much uh, I'll be needing, I'll be using two sand columns uh, where one of them will be incubated with the wild type of Colobacter crescentis with the normal production of holdfast material. And then the other, uh, sterile sand column will have a, a deficient strain where this Colobacter crescentis doesn't produce the holdfast or is deficient in producing the holdfast material. And then to answer the question of does the presence of holdfast material influence, influence aggregate stability, we can do aggregate fractionation to measure aggregate stability. And then to measure, to answer the question of does the presence of holdfast material influence non-holdfast soil organic carbon mineralization? Uh, in these tubes, I'll also have soda lime so that we can do an absorption of uh, 13C labeled CO2 and get the percent 
13C as well as the total carbon uh, within these tubes to see uh, the mineralization process. And then using NanoSIMS, which is a device that allows you to do elemental and isotopic composition analysis between uh, organic materials and uh, other solids. And with this, you would get something like this. So within these uh, tubes, I would also have uh, 13C labeled cellulose and 15N labeled chitin uh, to differentiate between the organic matter that we introduce it and differentiate between the bacterial cells themselves. And in nanosims, we are able to analyze these aggregate structures and differentiate between uh, what's remaining of the 13C labeled uh, organic matter and what is left and where the cells are in and on the aggregate structure. And then with chapter three, uh, which is going into the space side of the research, I want to understand if gravity is a part of microbial or aggregation mechanisms on Earth. And some of you may be asking why, why do we want uh, or should do experiments in space? Um, and a common uh, reason why astrobiology is a thing and uh, taking plants onto the International Space Station is a thing is because gravity is known to have this masking effect. So if you imagine the Colobacter crescentis cell um, and it has its, its hold fast holding it onto a mineral, um, keeping it in place, uh, you, you can imagine that you have this huge force vector of gravity pulling it down. And we kind of make this assumption that most likely one of the reasons why this holdfast material was naturally selected for is because of the evolution of the Colobacter crescentis in Earth's gravity. Earth's gravity is trying to pull the cell down. And if the cell did not have this organic adhesive, it would just be washed through the soil column and wouldn't be able to adhere near uh, uh, areas of interest in the in the soil. So we kind of make this assumption that uh, this organism evolved due to this uh, force vector of gravity. But when we take organisms outside of Earth's gravity and into an environment where you can isolate that, sometimes it can be surprising that we actually don't see a change in uh, the fundamental mechanisms or biological processes within an organism. Meaning that if you compare the sample you have in Earth gravity to the sample that you have on the International Space Station, nothing changed. Which means that this mechanism, this biological process that you are studying is actually inherent to the organism. Meaning that if you had the organism on Mars or on the moon, or on Earth, or on the International Space Station, the same process would stay the same. It's not gravity dependent. So I wanted to ask the same question for uh, natural Earth soils, specifically the questions of, is the production of holdfast uh, by bacteria inherent to bacteria, meaning it's independent of gravity? Or is the production of holdfast dependent on the presence of Earth gravity meaning that as when we look at it on the International Space Station, the production of the holdfast is going to change because its production is dependent on having that gravitational force. So the two objectives that I have here for this chapter is of course, understand the effect of gravity on fungal myosilin and bacterial holdfast production in soil. Um, and with this one, we believe that fungal myosome production will decrease in the absence of gravity, specifically more likely due to uh, the abiotic factor of in a microgravity environment, your soil matrix may be floating um, with the soil particles going everywhere. In fact, uh, fungi myosome really rely on being able to spread across uh, 
the soil matrix. So we might see an actual decrease in myosome production as well as a decrease in the fungal population in the absence of gravity. And then with bacteria, we also think that potentially we'll see a, a decrease in hold fast production in the absence of gravity. And this, we the reasoning that we have for that is that because gravity is no longer pulling down uh, on the bacteria uh, and threatening the bacteria uh, uh, being washed out of the soil column away from nutrient sources, that the bacteria may still adhere to minerals, but doesn't have to produce as much uh, holdfast to work against such a big uh, force vector. So we believe that bacteria will produce less holdfast in this case. Um, and then objective two, determine alterations in soil aggregate stability in the absence of gravity. Uh, we believe that aggregate stability will decrease due to the associated decrease in microbial organic adhesive production, as we've saw with our hypotheses in objective one, and that more micro aggregates will be present compared to macro aggregates for this very same reason that um, for macro aggregates to form uh, having the microbial organic adhesive production uh, to hold together uh, these aggregates is, is very important. And so the decreased production of this will lead to those macro aggregates either not forming or being highly unstable. And so with this experiment, it's a 30 day incubation experiment um, that's currently up on the International Space Station. It launched uh, back in earlier this month uh, out of Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia. So I was there for that and that was exciting. Um, and this experiment consists of three different uh, soil types. You have the soil from Ithaca, you have a soil from Berlin, Germany, and then you have a biochar potty media from Bio365 here in Ithaca, New York. And the, uh, the treatments for the soils are the same across the soils. Uh, you have 12 tubes per soil and these are divided into six tubes that have restricted movement and six tubes that have loose movement. And this is pretty much studying the abiotic element of having increased space between the soil particles. Like I was saying before, with loose movement, allowing the soil to just float in the microgravity environment, uh, does that have an effect on the microbial population dynamics as well as the production of these organic adhesives versus the tubes that have restricted movement where they've been stoppered into place, still allowing for gas and water exchange, but stoppered into place so that the soil minerals are actually closer together and kept closer together. And then those are subdivided into having 60% water hold ca holding capacity versus 30% water holding capacity, which 30% water holding capacity is closer to drought conditions while 60% is more optimal. And so this is studying more of the biotic uh, uh, factor of our samples, understanding uh, how the microorganisms are reacting uh, in this kind of environment. And so to meet the objectives of the experiment, the ISS samples are gonna be compared to earth-based control samples. Uh, and pretty much we're doing a lot of the same things that I proposed in the last two chapters. We're looking at carbon and decomposition dynamics, looking at the total carbon of the samples through the atmosphere of the tube, uh, any change in mass of the organic matter that we have in the soil samples, uh, looking at aggregate presence and stability, so using a particle counter to see if we have any aggregates that formed uh, larger than the size that we sieve the soil to, as well as pulling out some of those potential aggregates and doing aggregate fractionation to see how stable they are. And then using scanning transmission electron microscopy to really analyze the holdfast uh, mineral interface. And then we have a collaborator that's uh, specifically working on the microbiome characterization of the experiment. And so the implications here uh, of doing this work overall is that being able to understand the bacterial adhesive mechanism of Colobacter crescentis could provide insight into 
other bacterial adhesive mechanisms that haven't been fully characterized. It will also help us understand how to better manage uh, the soil microbiome in different systems here on Earth, understanding that if gravity really isn't part of the mechanism driving the production of uh, hold fast and organic adhesive production, what's really driving that mechanism? And how can we uh, implement management practices to uh, better uh, help the creation of organic adhesive if we see that it actually helps with soil organic carbon sequestration? Um, and then, of course, microbial development in different gravity environments. Uh, understanding this is more the planetary science side of things. Uh, when we go to Mars, when we're on the moon, uh, do we go with an understanding that it's possible that microorganisms can survive and produce these organic adhesives uh, on other planets in differing gravity environments? Um, and then, of course, furthermore, in the industry, adhesives are a growing field of research and production, especially producing adhesives that come from organic natural systems. Um, and so there actually has been a lot of interest in seeing how we can pull Colobacter crescentis holdfast out of the environment and actually implement it in industry as an adhesive. Um, and then, of course, saying thank you to the contributors of my research, my PhD committee, um, Dr. Lehman, Dr. Martinez, and Dr. Hay, um, research collaborators, uh, Dr. Rolly Wilhelm, who's a postdoc here in the Buckley Lab. Uh, he's definitely helped a lot with helping me understand uh, the hold fast and Colobacter crescentis. Um, and then Dr. Matthias Rillig, who's partnering with us on the uh, International Space Station experiment. And then of course, funding uh, from uh, my NSF Graduate Research Program Fellowship, a fellowship I have through Norfolk Institute and funding we got from the Zwillenberg Tietz Stiftung Foundation in Germany. And then our industry collaborators and sponsors such as Deep Space Ecology, Rhodium Scientific, Bio365, uh, CASIS, uh, ISS National Lab and NASA. So that's my presentation. Thank you for listening. Great. So Morgan, thank you. That was a great presentation and really, really interesting work. Um, and it's nice to start seeing it all coming uh, to fruition. On your space station experiment with the tubes where you've got the soil, I'm curious, and I may have missed it, you may have said it, um, what is the pressure, temperature, and most importantly, the composition of the atmosphere that the soil is being exposed to there? Yeah, so it's at, uh, so because these are natural, natural earth samples uh, and a biochar sample um, with microorganisms and living in them, we had to double contain them. Uh, so they're in their tubes, they're sealed with, and then sealed within two heat sealed baggies um, because the ISS is very much about keeping everything as sterile as possible. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> it was a journey to get these samples up there. Uh, but uh, so within the tubes themselves, they have the atmosphere composition that they pretty much had here on earth when we sealed them. Um, temperature wise, uh, they are at the same ambient temperature of the International Space Station, uh, which is about room temperature pretty much. Um, and I, I did forget to mention that we do have chemical uh, temperature sensors that are uh, right next to our samples. So we will be getting a temperature data uh, so that we can better control our ground samples to uh, match the same uh, temperature and atmospheric dynamics as they have on the International Space Station. Yeah, terrific. So those tubes are fitted with SEPTA then, so you can do your post-analysis gas sampling? Yep. <laughs> Thank you so much, Morgan. Thank you. Any other questions for Morgan? <laughs> it's get, getting I had, I had one. I, I just want to know how, you, how unique is this? I mean, 
Is this the first soil that's gone to the space station? I, I, I'm quite ignorant on this topic. Um, I mean, how, yeah. Yeah, so it is the first time natural earth soil has been sent into space, um, which is super exciting and a big win for soil science, um, I think. <laughs> Uh, pretty much the what they do with plant experiments on the International Space Station, a lot of it is hydroponics uh, technology, as well as if they do have a substrate, it's an engineered substrate like uh, to use like seed pillows, things like that, but never an actual earth soil. Um, so if you see mention of, like I know that uh, the Chinese, they sent uh, an experiment to the moon where they were growing plants uh, seeds in soil. Uh, we contacted them just to verify uh, what what they were actually growing in and they were using a engineered vermiculite uh, that they had put additives to. So uh, yes, our, our samples are the first actual natural earth soils to go so, into space. So, so we have to get a new uh, soil order for this or something. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. Um, Kirsten, she actually made this pun. She uh, she said that we've we're bringing the soil profile to new horizons. So <laughs> the horizon of space. We now have the S horizon. <laughs> yes. Oh, now that is good. Above the L horizon is the S horizon. Very good. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> This has been a production of Cornell University, on the web at cornell.edu.